I would have liked to have handed over now to, uh, 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 to do a wrap-up with um, uh, uh, Liz Lefferman, Vice Chair of uh, England's Economic Heartland, but unfortunately she's been delayed. So I'm going to hand over to Naomi to round us out and to uh, wrap us up. And I believe you're going to call on um, Duncan to help out as well. Thank you very much. So before we started this conference, as a team, we had some measures of success. One of them was that people could get here. I think that's been a success. Secondly, that people didn't leave and we'd uh, perhaps spread a little bit of COVID. So let's, we're all ho hoping that that one is a success and congratulations to the team for all the measures they've put in place to manage that. Thirdly, that our speakers could get here. And we have got there until the last speaker who regretfully got stuck on the A43 um, in, a, in, a, in a long traffic jam, which might affect others as we go. Um, and, uh, um, and I understand she's just arrived, has she? So she will be able to wrap up in a minute. But um, on her behalf, I just wanted to mention, because I think she'll probably just close quickly, given trains, etc., um, that this has been a fantastic conference. Um, thank you very much to everyone for giving their time, not just for today, but for everything that England's Economic Heartland is working towards. Um, keep your eye out for the spending review. I know Councillor Leffen was going to finish on what we really need to see in the spending review. We've got four things. One is to deliver the infrastructure that we know we need. We've been talking about that all day today. We need to see those committed to next week. Secondly, to give us funds to start delivering business cases for schemes that we've identified as priorities. That's really, really important. Thirdly, to support us, giving us the capacity and capability funding that we need to actually build and deliver the projects that we've been talking about. And fourthly, to give us, a pro give us program spending to continue the work that England's Economic Heartland has been doing. Councillor Leffman has happily just walked into the room, so I will hand over to her as Vice Chair of our Board. I'm very sorry that um, our transport system failed at the last minute. That is a huge disappointment, but welcome to the stage and thank you so much thank for coming. You. Thank you so much, Naomi. <laughs> okay. Well, I can tell you why I'm here. I'm here because we need a much better transport system in this country. <laughs> If there was ever an, in, an illustration of how bad the transport system in this region is, it has to be the A43. I have been sitting in something like half an hour's worth of traffic, and, and it was completely unclear why the traffic had stopped. So the sooner we can get some proper rail transport and proper connectivity in this region, the better it will be, not just for us, but for everybody else, and indeed for the whole of our economy. So having gone co totally off piste, I will now speak to you the way I was planning to. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Councillor Liz Leffman and I am the leader of Oxfordshire County Council. And um, I was recently elected as the Vice Chair of England's Economic Heartland, so it's great to be here today. Um, and yeah, for your third conference here. Well, um, not having been involved with English, England's Economic Heartland before, this is the first one for me. And I'm very pleased to be here to close this conference. I know that you've had some excellent speakers. I know some of them personally. Um, and I know that you will have heard some very inspiring things. But I'd like to spend some time with you reflecting on what success might look like for us. My fellow speakers, I know, will have done an excellent job in demonstrating the first steps to achieve EEH's ambition, which is to support sustainable growth and improve quality of life and well-being through a world-class decarbonized transport system which harnesses the region's global expertise in technology and innovation to unlock new opportunities for residents and businesses in a way that benefits the UK as a whole. And I really want to emphasize how important that is. To achieve this, we are working collaboratively to support the region's long-term economic, environmental and social aspirations by delivering transport infrastructure and solutions to transform both our region and also beyond. Now, I think if I press that button, I may get the next slide. I hope. And nothing is happening. Ah. Do I need to do something other than what I'm doing? Sorry, laser. No, nope. don't press the Oh, no. Well, never mind. I'll just carry on speaking. <laughs> you don't need to see my slides. 
Oh, there we are. It's come up now. That's great. There we are. Perfect. Absolutely. So we know that a transport system is much more than just the component parts uh, of buses and trains and bikes or even our own two feet. If we get it right, it can deliver transport, it can deliver improvements on social equity through connectivity with greater services and greater opportunities for everybody. But if we get it wrong, we can end up by isolating communities literally on the wrong side of the tracks. And I'm sure we've all seen how that has happened over the years. It's about connecting communities, and today and tomorrow, it means doing it with climate at the heart of our policies, climate and environment. And that's why that is there on that slide. The EEH spending re review submission sets out a four-pronged approach to turning our transport strategy into reality and securing the necessary investment in the Heartland's infrastructure. With the driver of climate emergency behind us, it is exciting to know that delivering infrastructure to achieve a change in travel patterns will support making real progress towards net zero carbon emissions. Reliable, affordable, inclusive, and integrated transport uh, public transport is fundamental to the modal shift that's needed for a sustainable world, both environmentally and in terms of social value. Digital technology will improve connectivity and well-planned interconnecting transport solutions will be a catalyst for regeneration across the area. We also know that transport connectivity impacts on a much wider geography than narrow local interventions. I want to challenge everyone to start to think about how the ripple effects of interest in, about the ripple effects of infrastructure investment. East-West Rail is not just about connecting the towns on the railway line. It is the next step in national connectivity, something which is being recognized by the East-West Line Partnership. Coast-to-coast -coast connectivity for people and for freight is a huge opportunity that we cannot afford to miss. And I say that with great heart, I felt a really heartfelt plea here because I'm stuck behind so many lorries on the A43 just now. Our reach will be regional, but also local with detailed attention to the needs of localities. But we need funding to cover the cost of planning and developing the detail of our infrastructure priorities, which have been identified by the EEH transport strategy. This essential investment will ensure that the region has a viable package of oven-ready or spade-ready proposals, which are financially attractive to central government. This will give DFT and its agencies a greater sense of how investable our projects are. Our connectivity studies will support us in identifying and prioritizing interventions to develop through strategic online business case. Investment in transport can act as a catalyst for regeneration of a whole area. We need to secure the capital funding for construction of our region's key infrastructure priorities that must be delivered by 2025. Delivering these priorities allows us to keep unavoidable costs to a minimum as well as reaping the economic benefits sooner. And I think we would all agree that actually it is critical now that we get on with the job of decarbonizing transport as fast as possible. I think with COP26 round the corner, that message is going to be going out loud and clear, I hope, to people not just here but everywhere. You heard Councillor Duncan Enright, my colleague, um, earlier talking about how Oxford Station is an example of a scheme that improves regional connectivity as well as enabling local economic and regeneration benefits. Upgrading strategic infrastructure like the rail corridor through Oxford alongside passenger and freight service enhancements will be needed to enable the full potential of east-west rail mainline project identified as a priority in the EEH transport strategy. So in developing our proposals across the EEH and the ARC areas, we need to remember 
that the world doesn't finish at Oxford and Cambridge. It's catchy shorthand, the Ox Oxcam arc, but potentially blinds us to the opportunity and the need to better connect to other parts of the UK, Swindon, Bristol and the South West, and across to strategic locations in the East like Felixstowe. Recognising that freight as well as passenger movements will be critical to success. But east to west connectivity can also assist in development beyond our region with links that allow travel that avoids the current problem of everything connecting through London. We know that to deliver this, we need to increase regional capacity and capability in support of partners developing and, invest and delivering investment priorities. By investing in and establishing a regional centre of excellence, EH wants to create a specialised skills unit on which all individual partners are able to draw on as and when required. The centre of excellence will be a small, dedicated, specialist team with technical and professional skills upon which all partners can turn to support their development of early stage detail scheme proposals. Such an arrangement will achieve significant economies of scale, providing value for money for taxpayers. The team will accumulate knowledge and experience that can be retained within the region to the collective benefit of all partners. Also important will be support for innovative ideas. In working to achieve decarbonisation, as well as longer term electrification projects, which are inevitably long-term for cost and other reasons, we need to be looking at what to do in the interim in the context of our shared targets and ambitions for net zero. The example pictured is a Chiltern Railways hybrid train which operates on battery power to reduce noise and emissions in stations, but which, un once underway, transitions back to diesel power, which also recharges the battery, a similar concept to that of a hybrid car. This gives benefits of reduced fuel consumption and NOx emissions as well as journey time and route capacity improvements and it's typical of the sort of thing that we would like to see developed here in England's economic heartland. And finally, the EH Spending Review submission seeks to ensure the government's commitment to sub-national transport bodies is appropriately reflected by a long-term commitment to their resourcing EH's transport strategy and provides the policy framework for delivering the economic potential of our region while achieving net zero emissions. We must now work collaboratively to turn the strategy's words into actions, delivering its ambitions and implementing its policies. However, the lack of certainty and timing of funding from the DFT impacts our ability to take forward work to implement the transport strategy and ensure maintenance of the EH evidence base. As such, a core part of the EH spending review submission is for a three-year settlement from government. This would be supported by local funding contributions provided by constituent members. This commitment to EH's programme of work will enable us to implement the strategy's plan for the region. I'd like to finish by thanking today's organisers and speakers for providing a diverse and captivating collection of ideas, views and priorities, and you for joining us here today. To close, I would like to highlight how together we share the knowledge, enthusiasm and opportunity to deliver infrastructure solutions to transform our region for the better. Our success lies not only in what we will achieve in our own communities, but the influence that that will have beyond it. And I go back to saying what I said earlier, which is that this is just part of improving connectivity across the whole of this country. The East-West project will open up that corridor, but it will also allow connections out into other regions, and that is going to be key when it comes to the development, not just of our transport system, but our economy in general. Thank you all for your attendance. My apologies for being so late, and thank you for being here with us today.
Liz. Um, I'm pleased you made it in the end. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's content, today's conference. Hope you've enjoyed being back all in the same room together and uh, being uh, able to share ideas and discuss opportunities together. Uh, connecting people, transforming journeys is a really uh, transformational uh, strategy and certainly one which has got big challenges and really big opportunities. I think we've heard from some really good speakers today uh, who've brought that strategy to life, brought those opportunities to life, and really uh, highlighted the challenges that together you need to overcome. I was really taken by Nick's three Cs, uh, his uh, need for this, this to be compassionate, uh, cooperatively delivered, and to really engage the community. And I suppose you could add many more Cs in there as you ponder your journeys. You could talk about a strategy that is connected, a strategy that includes collaboration, uh, that is clean uh, with its solutions, that is carbon cutting, um, that is clear. How about that? A strategy that's clear. Um, but also delivered by people in this team that really care about the solutions that are being delivered for some really, really important communities. So, Thanks very much for coming along. I hope you've got a lot of really useful information and useful um, uh, updates about what's going on uh, across the England's uh, economic heartland. Um, thanks very much to, as Liz said, to all the people that have organized. Thanks to all the sponsors that have exhibited and have been available to discuss the opportunities with you. Um, and I hope you managed to get a, a ride on and to try out some of the, uh, the equipment that was outside in the rain. Um, thanks for bringing all, the, all that along. Um, and thanks to Paul and Andrew for organizing on behalf of Meetings of Minds. If you liked what you saw today, there's more coming. Oh, yes. 26th of May, date for your diary. I think it's on a board somewhere there. 26th of May, uh, Meetings of Minds are bringing together seven STBs. Uh, and the, having a gathering to discuss the challenges that uh, strategic transport uh, bodies have across the UK. Uh, that's going to be in Birmingham, 26th of May. Make sure you're aware of what's going on there and get adva take advantage of that. Hopefully, we'll be back doing some other bits and pieces um, uh, with England's Economic Heartland over the next 12 months. If it's not, well, I'm sure we'll be back here or somewhere similar uh, then. So. Thanks very much. Um, a reminder that the, uh, if, you, if you are uh, making your way home, well, take heed of what Liz has told us about the, um, was it the A46? A43. All right, A43 going north, you know, enjoy that. If you're getting a train and need a bus, I think they're all waiting for you, but they'll all be down there waiting for you to kind of get onto them. But um, thanks from me uh, for all your questions and for uh, being such a fantastic uh, audience. It is great to be back doing things live. So thanks for your, uh, all your questions and getting so involved. And thanks for all the speakers that have contributed so wonderfully. I'll let you get off to do the rest of the things of your day, but see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>